Hi, welcome to Forever Paranormal with Dr. Bill and Deb. The term paranormal refers to phenomena and experiences that are beyond the scope of normal scientific understanding and cannot be easily explained through traditional scientific principles. These phenomena often challenge conventional beliefs and are associated with the supernatural, metaphysical, or unexplained aspects of reality. As with any field of inquiry, it is essential to approach the paranormal with an open but critical mind, relying on empirical evidence and logical reasoning to draw conclusions. It's a topic that continues to intrigue and challenge both believers and skeptics alike, and if we can connect a paranormal element to it, we'll talk about it. You'll be surprised by what all can be connected to the paranormal. Please don't forget to follow, rate, and share the show, since it would not be possible without you, our listeners. And as a public service, we would like to let everyone know that you are truly never alone, even if you think you are. The Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is 988. Please just reach out. Well, hello there everyone, and welcome to another Spooky Season episode, where this week we're going to talk about horror movies. We all have our favorites, and you know, to help us discuss this and add a little flair to the topic, we have a special guest with us tonight. Deb and everyone else, let's welcome Wyatt to the show. Wyatt's going to join us tonight and uh, let us know his input on some good horror movies. Hi, Wyatt. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing real good. How are you doing, Deb? I'm good. Hi, Wyatt. Glad you're here. Good to be here. Anything new going on this week, Deb? No, not really. Not really? Okay. Well, we talked about the crows and the hawks last week, so we'll skip that over this week. And we'll get on with the horror movies. Okay, we're going to start talking, and but what we're going to do first is go over the top grossing movies as figured by box office receipts and things like that. And coming in at number one is the movie It. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie, but I think the book was much better. Absolutely. Um, then we have... At number two, the Will Smith vampire movie, I Am Legend. That yeah, was okay. Uh, we've got number three, Jaws. I mean, who doesn't love Jaws? I can't believe that one is still on one of the top grossing lists. It's, oh, it's so old. It's such a great movie. Mm-hmm. Then we have It, Chapter Two. One that I know terrifies Deb, The Exorcist. It's okay to be scared. <laughs> then we have The Nun at number six. And, and just for your information, folks, The Nun 2 has only been out for several weeks. But it is already number 32 on the top grossing list of horror movies. Yeah. Then we come in with Hannibal. You got to have Scream in there somewhere. The Conjuring. Resident Evil, The Final Chapter, The Conjuring 2, The Enfield Poltergeist, Annabelle Creation, A Quiet Place, Part 2, A Quiet Place 1 is right in there with it somewhere. Number 14, we have Resident Evil Afterlife. you got to love all the Resident Evil movies. Split comes in at number 15, and I have to admit, I've never seen that one, so... Oh, I have, and it terrifies me. Okay. Then uh, we've got The Silence of the Lambs. I like that one. we got Annabelle. Great movie. Halloween. Get Out. Another, another one I never saw. Oh, that one is at the top of my scariest list. Oh, okay. Good to know. Mm-hmm. And we've got Constantine. I know I love that movie. Yeah, that's a great movie. One of my favorites for sure. Yeah. Then we have The Ring. We've got Resident Evil Retribution. Alien Covenant. Another one of my favorites, the original, Interview with the Vampire. But I will say this again. 
Anne Rice's books are much better than the movie was. But the movie was still pretty good. Then we have Smile. One of the greatest Dracula movies ever made, in my opinion. Bram Stoker's Dracula. I'll second that opinion. And we got Jaws 2. The Others with Nicole Kidman. And then you've got Johnny Depp rounding it out with Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move on to the top series of movies. We're going to do them in no particular order. And, but before you start blaming me for Friday the 13th not being any of these lists, I didn't create the list. I'm just reading it. I think Crystal Lake, Jason, and Friday the 13th needs to be in here somewhere. But that's just my opinion. Okay, so we've got The Conjuring series. Alien, Resident Evil, Saw. What do they have, like Saw 38 now or something? <laughs> We've got Dracula, Scream, Halloween, Predator, Insidious, Final Destination, The Exorcist, and of course you got to bring Freddy in there with a Nightmare on Elm Street series. Those are all pretty good in their rights. But when they throw Dracula in here, I mean, are we going... Clear back to Bella Lugosi and up through, or or what are they doing with this? And there's no werewolf movies in here. None of these are werewolf movies. What in the world? Okay, Deb. So we know that Get Out was one of the scariest movies. Why is that so scary? It, well, I'm not into all the blood guts and and stuff like that. This movie was a psychological nightmare. And every step of the movie, I did not know what was going to happen next. And it's one of those movies that makes you think, what was this all about? And why am I looking in the corners and over my shoulders? Yeah, I, I know you're not a big fan of the gore and, and stuff like that. As uh, you reminded me of when we were watching Evil Dead Rise a few weeks back, you know, you're just not into the gore stuff. Right. It just, I had no idea what was going on, but I was scared to death about what was going to happen throughout the movie. Maybe it's because I was watching it by myself. I don't know. What, I don't know. Have you seen it? What? Get out. Um. Yeah, I've seen it, but I didn't. I didn't like it too much. It didn't do anything for me. But you seem to like psychological thrillers, and I'll agree that Split was a good, good uh, one of those. Yeah, that one also. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't see that one, but uh, was it kind of like Nope? You know, we saw that one with the aliens and stuff, and that to me that really wasn't a horror movie, even though it's classified as one. I didn't think it was spooky at all. Well, it's the same director for Nope and Get Out. Oh, okay. Same guy made it. Okay, well, either way. All right, so, Deb, we know you don't like the gory movies. I can take the gory movies one way or another. It doesn't really bother me. But as you know, and I'm sure Wyatt knows, I'm a huge fan, a huge fan of B-rated horror movies, <laughs> especially the old black and white ones. The Creature of the Black Lagoon. What an awesome movie. Um, I Married a Witch from like 1940-something. You know, these, these old black and white, just B-rated horror movies are awesome. You know, so where are you guys at on these movies? I think they're pretty all right. Um, I would say Dracula, like one of the old ones, was my favorite. I don't remember what year that came out, but that definitely had me entertained as a kid. I'll say that. Yeah, that was in the 30s, and uh, I've already talked about how it's tradition in the house for us to watch the original Wolfman every year at Halloween. I was kind of surprised that Alien, uh, The Covenant, was on your top 30 list, but Prometheus wasn't. It's prequel. Yeah, Prometheus is a really good movie, and I enjoyed it a lot. And it's a little bit farther down the list. I know it's in the top 50. Where it's at exactly, I'm not sure. But yeah, you're right. That's definitely a good movie. And, you know, had some great... Actors in it, too. Um, I liked it better than I did any of the Alien movies, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, I thought all the Aliens were pretty good, but Prometheus, I think, would take the cake on that one. 
Yeah, I agree. Deb, you got any comment on that? Not really. Not my kind of movie. You know, a lot of these movies in this list are based on the Conjuring franchise, which most of those are based on Ed and Lorraine Warren's case files, which I think it's pretty cool. You know, they say they were really great at what they did and great demonologist and a great clairvoyant. And their case files have definitely made some great movies. Um, you guys like those movies or? I find them very creepy. Um, I don't, I definitely can't sleep for a while after watching them. There's definitely no blood and gore in them, so I thought you would like something no, like that. No, it's, it's the scare factor, just like in The Nun. Um, I, that one kind of terrified me, too, just with the unexpectedness of everything. Yeah, The, the Nun was a great movie. I haven't seen The Nun 2 yet, but I'm looking forward to it. So, Wyatt, what about you? You got a, a movie you want to throw in there on us, or...? Sure, yeah. I think The Shining with Jack Nicholson was uh, a fantastic thriller because I think we can all see ourselves going insane over time after being snowed in for months. Um, as far as the ghosts and stuff coming out of the hotel, I don't know. But Yeah, that that's a great movie. And, uh, you know, Stephen King based that book off of a hotel in Colorado called the Stanley Hotel which is supposed to be one of the most haunted places in the country. There's a movie called Doctor Sleep, which is actually another Stephen King novel. That's the prequel to The Shining. I'll have to check that one out. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a really great movie. And, uh, you know, if you haven't seen it, you got to see it. So it, it's really great, really great movie. Deb, you've seen that one, haven't you? Yeah, and... I think I've seen two versions of it, actually. Oh, I wasn't aware there's two like versions. Like an original and then a remake. I thought there was only one that had, um, oh, Ian McGregor and stuff in it. Maybe I'm thinking of another one. I don't know, but it was very good. Yeah, that was a that was a good movie with no gore. I mean, there you go. It's a non-gory film for you. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to say, you know, there's some stupid movies that I like, too. And I think another underrated good movie is The Mist, the original one. I remember seeing that as a teenager with Adrian Barbeau, and it scared the crap out of me. That was a scary movie. Did you watch it because Adrian was in it? No, I did not. I watched it because it was one of the double features at the drive-in when I was a kid. We had drive-ins, and we went there to see the spooky movies on the weekends. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. All right. Enough with that. But then, you know, you got some gory movies that you've got to throw in there, too. So, Deb, Wyatt, what about Rob Zombie's A House of a Thousand Corpses? Oh, God. Fantastic. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, okay. But you know, Deb, I'm pretty sure you're fond of the soundtrack of that movie. Well, yes, of course. But all that blood and sawing and just plain disgustingness is, uh, it's not for me. Yeah, well, you know, one of the, one of the, Old movies I mentioned earlier that's on my list, top list of horror films, is The Creature from the Black Lagoon. I mean, that was just so cool when I was a kid. And we didn't even talk about any monster movies like Godzilla and Mothra and things like that. I'm not counting those in this episode. We're, we're going to leave those out. Um, and we've, we've got B-rated films all over the place. A good one... <laughs> it's kind of wild, but it's like back in the 70s, and it's called The Love Witch. That was that was a pretty cool movie, a B-rated m movie about witchcraft and witches and stuff. They actually remade that movie, um, a newer version of it with the popular actress. Really? I haven't heard of that. I haven't seen it. I got to look that up. Huh. You know, because I like the witch movies. They're, they're all pretty cool. Yeah, you know... Speaking of remakes, 
we, we've got to talk, we've got to bring up The Haunting of Hill House. The original one with Dry McDonald's, so it, that was really good. And the newer one that they made with Liam Neeson and stuff, it wasn't that good. It was still a good movie, but I don't think it was that great. Isn't that a Netflix series now? or? I think it was. I think it's a Netflix series now. So, why you want to throw another movie into the mix here? Yeah, one of my all-time favorite Halloween movies is Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. Uh, it has vampires, werewolves, uh, Frankenstein, all you can ask for. Just the whole genre in one movie. Yeah, you know, that's a great movie, and I must have seen it a bazillion times. But, uh, yeah, I, I do like that movie. You know, and, and you know, you got Kate Beckinsale in there who stars in some pretty good vampire movie franchise, right? And we all know what that one is. Come on, you know what it is, right? Underworld? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many times have you seen that movie, Deb? Way too many. Yeah, and you couldn't even remember the name of it. I've fallen asleep to them quite often. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that one's not gory then. All right. Yeah, but that was a great franchise movie. You know, and it, it didn't even make any of the list, not even in the top 50, I don't think. Huh. But that one's got vampires and werewolves and all kinds of cool stuff. So. What about a good old-fashioned Frankenstein? We, you know, we just watched good old-fashioned, the original Frankenstein a few weeks back. If you remember, you may have fell asleep. It was, I probably did, but it's good for a couple of viewings. Yeah, it was one of those uh, Saturday afternoon, let's put a good old movie on, and we watched Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein's a good one, too. And there are a bunch of different versions of Frankenstein, and Frankenstein's daughter, Frankenstein's wife, Frankenstein's bride, uh, young Frankenstein. That's a, that was a pretty damn funny movie, I'll tell you that. Um, it wasn't very scary, but it was funny. You know, then if we just start throwing some really good horror movies in that weren't necessarily the top of the box office or top franchise or anything like that, then you've got to throw in Pinhead, Hellraiser. Now, that's a gory movie, but I love it, and I love Pinhead, one of my favorite horror characters of all time. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I saw a part of a movie I probably shouldn't have, and it was Hellraiser, and uh, there were a bunch of chains and hooks hanging with meat off of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it scared me quite a bit. Now, that was Hellraiser, that's for sure. That was one of those adult movies you had to go to bed for when you were a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got Phantasm with the ball. That was a scary movie. Um, that's another... I saw it to drive in when I was a young kid. You know, you're sitting in the car in the dark and you have to drive in and you're like, oh, it's so spooky, it's so scary. But, you know, that was great times. I miss those things, you know. But uh, we've been a few drive-ins. We've had you to drive in. Deb, we've had you to drive in. So, <clears throat> but, you know, those were great times. That's right. Then you've got to throw in movies like Candyman. Trick or Treat, just the good old Halloween movies. Um, scary stories to tell in the dark. Now that, that is okay, but that's a good horror flick. Deb, if I remember correctly, you were a big fan of the Lost Boys, weren't you? Yeah, back in the 80s. Well, why was that? Was that because of... <laughs> It might have had some cute vampires. In oh, it. okay. So, like, Keith or Sutherland and Jason Patrick and them guys had something to do with them probably, right? Most likely, yes. Oh, okay. I remember you liked that movie. You know, I almost forgot about Kevin Bacon, who seems like he's connected to everybody in movies one way or another, right? He did Hallow Man, which was a remake of The Invisible Man. Tremors. He was in Tremors, like Tremors 4000, something like that, many of them. And uh, that, those were all pretty good. And then, you know, why we, we touched on Constantine for a minute, but i got to go back to that movie and say, 
that is definitely one of my favorites. I, I just love watching that movie. Absolutely. I mean, it's a movie about the struggle uh, between good and evil, uh, the devil and God. And it's a cool movie. Um, actually, Keanu Reeves did an interview recently, and he said if he could redo any character or like play another that character again, it would be John Constantine. Yeah, and, and it is about good and evil, but it also shows how sometimes you've got to use evil to beat evil. You know, you, you're not always using good to beat evil. Sometimes you've got to be evil to beat evil. Yeah, that's one of those uh, the ends justify the means situations. Eh, yeah, you might be right about that. Yeah, just might be. You know, one of our fans had posted something on Facebook about the original 1962 version of the Carnival of Souls. Yeah, that's a pretty good one, too. And it it comes right in there within the top probably 100, 150 of all-time rated horror movies just for the goodness of the movie, just because it's a good movie. You know, we talked about how there wasn't many werewolf movies in there, but Ginger Snaps and a couple after that with Ginger Snap remakes is pretty good. One of my favorite werewolf movies, believe it or not, is called Blood and Chocolate. And the story behind that is very good. I was actually just going to bring that one up. Uh, that's the one with Amanda Seyfried, right? Yes, that, that's right. And that, that was a really good movie. And that, that one's hard to find to watch. Um, it's not, not out there that often. You know, actually, I think the Amanda Seyfried movie you're talking about is not Blood and Chocolate. I think that's Red Riding Hood. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Well, just want to make sure we put the credit where the credit's due. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good one, too, though. I like that movie. It really was good. Yeah, I liked them both growing up. Yeah. Well, Deb, I, go ahead and ask. What, what would you just ask me? Do you really consider Godzilla and Mothra and the Godzilla series of movies uh, horror flicks or just supernatural? You know, I'm really not sure, but I classify those as more of a monster type of movie instead of a horror movie. But I, they, they probably are horror movies, but still, the Godzilla movies are great. I mean, I, I watch those growing up. They're good all year long. Yeah, they're, they're great all the time. Absolutely. Do you ever think maybe they're gigantic cryptids? Uh, yeah, actually, they are cryptids. <laughs> they Technically, by the definition of a cryptid, yes, they're cryptids. Hmm. Oh, look at you. <laughs> then we've got to throw in some of the stupid, funny horror movies. Evil Dead. That's one. That With Bruce Campbell, that is just a stupid, funny horror movie. But it's still a horror movie, and it's pretty cool. Is that anything like Scary Movie? Kind of like Scary Movie, yeah. <laughs> you scary know. Movie's pretty funny. The scary Movie is pretty funny. But uh, Evil Dead's more horror rated with the Book of the Dead. But yeah, they're, they're both good. Yeah. But hands down, the best werewolf movie, even though it may not be my f- personal favorite, I think the best hands down, werewolf movie out there is an American werewolf in London. That and The Howling are probably two of the best all-around werewolf movies. Really great movies to watch. And I think that any horror movie that you watch, as long as you're into it and you like them and you watch them, great, then they're good. These were just ones that we like, that we were talking about, and some of the top grossing ones. And what about you, folks? We'd love to hear what you think about it. Go on the Facebook page. I've got a thing on there asking what your favorite horror movie is. And go ahead and let us know. And uh, maybe we'll do a whole episode about a certain horror movie or something. You never know. Well, Deb, Wyatt, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me on this episode. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was fun being on here. Yeah, it was really great. And folks, thank you. We're going to round this one out now. And 
Until next time, when we discuss another tale yet to be told. Thank you for listening, and remember to like and share the show. We would also appreciate a five-star rating wherever possible to help new listeners find the show. We welcome all questions or comments you may have about this or any other episode, and our contact information can be found in the show notes of this episode. You can also follow us at foreverparanormal.com. And if you'd like to support us, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash foreverparanormal. The links to these are also in the show notes of this episode. Thank you.